Hi, thank you for joining me. I'm going to review and talk to you a little bit about Peter Pan or Peter Pan and Wendy by J.M. Barry. And of course, you know Peter Pan the story and of course, you know Peter Pan the movies. However, have you read the original Peter and Wendy text? I have here two versions. This is a Barnes and Noble Classics from 2005, the most modern um, edition and the one that I use for my children's literature course for the undergraduate college student. And this is my copy from the Eastern Press, my favorite book published as you know of Peter Pan and Wendy and um, it actually has a lot of the original plates from um, you know the original sort of drawings and it also has the oil painting I believe they're either oil painting or watercolor um, uh, of the original and Peter Pan and Wendy was written in 1911 now it was originally a play that a couple of years later J.M. Barry put into a novel format so it was originally named Peter Pan and Wendy and later just sort of turned into being Peter Pan and I'm not actually sure when the name sort of got changed as time went on if it might have been because of the whole movie thing and um, of course this is an absolutely wonderful story and uh, of course, it's another or orphan plight story. We have Peter Pan as an orphan. We have the Lost Boys who are sort of orphans or motherless children. But the theme in Peter Pan and Wendy is really about timelessness and um, uh, holding on to sort of the lost part of ourselves. Now, J.M. Barry, the author, got the idea for Peter Pan. Um, his little brother died. He passed away. This would have been around the turn of the century, I suppose, in Ireland. His little brother, brother died and um, he was their mother's favorite. So when the brother died as a child, the mother went into sort of this grief depression for I think a year or two. And J.M. Barry, who was the only other son, um, I don't know if the others were girls, I think, but he went to all this effort to pull his mom out of the depression by telling stories and making up stories at her bedside and trying to um, put on his deceased brother's clothes and do the whistle he did and pretend to kind of be him just to try to pull his mother out of it, out of her grief. And eventually it worked. She came to and decided to focus um, her the rest of her life on her other remaining children. But when he wrote Peter Pan, it came from sort of you know the mother his mother never really recovered or let go of the death of the brother and she always referred to him as he was still young she always sort of kept him in that timelessness where even as an adult you know before his mother passed away she just still only you know when a child dies you you forever the rest of your life have in your mind of what the child last looked like when it was in your life, you know, and if the child died at the age of eight or nine, it will forever be a child. And so in your mind and in your heart. So Peter Pan was really from Jan Barry about the timelessness of, of that and forever remaining young, which as you see, you go to Neverland, you don't age, you stay young forever, you're free from adult problems. Now this story, um, if you've seen the Disney movie or any of the other adaptations, um, the Disney movie actually is really quite accurate. Uh, of course, there are some things in here that are not quite in the movie, but everything down to some of the lines in the movie um, to are in the book to even the description of the crocodile. What I did not expect, which you should be warned about, and this is actually not young child reading, first of all, because it is actually a very small word, um, long text, and... It, 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 you have to be an older child to read this, probably an adolescent nowadays, I would say, if you're reading the actual original version, not one of the classics that are sort of um, leveled down so children could understand. But what it was surprised me a great deal was the amount of violence in this book and reference to killing. So, of course, we see violence in Peter Pan in the movies. You see them fighting with swords or, you know, the, you know, they're trying to capture, but brutal violence, real brutal um, pirate violence, but mostly the kids wanting to kill the adults. Or um, here are a few lines in here. The boys on the island vary, of course, in numbers, according as they get killed, Peter said. Or we have, um, you know, uh, Peter talks about how they go on, they disappear for a few days at a time, and sometimes you find the bodies of the remnants of his adventures, and sometimes you don't. And there's more violence here. Wendy um, got shot in her breast with an arrow and bled horribly. There's another 
quote here. If you like, well, we'll go down and kill him if you want, Peter says. And then, of course, we have the the, or the Redskins, the Indians trying to kill them. We have the pirates trying to kill them. The boys are trying to kill the pirates. The word kill is used all the time. So there's actually some real violence aspect. And there's quite a bit of racist, racist undertones in here. You know, the Redskins, a few of the pirates are African-American. So they say, you know, well, there's one line that says the big dark black b behind him. Um you know, a little bit of racist stuff at the time. And um, there's some great, the first couple of chapters are my favorite. There are really some great, uh, and this is my notebook. I always take detailed notes when I'm analyzing classic texts. Um, really, the, the early scenes with the mother, the mother goes in and tries to control her child's dreams, her children's dreams. And uh, she, there's a lot of the mother in here. It's interesting that just like J.M. Barry's mother, with all the focus on his mother and the timelessness, wanting her children to stay timeless and never growing up, you see uh, Wendy's mother, Wendy John and Michael's mother in the early on the early scenes um ref reflecting on that and she's kind of a central character in the book a little bit more than the children even um here's a quote that i like when you wake in the morning the n the naughtiness and evil passions with which you went to bed have been folded up small and placed at the bottom of your mind and on your top and on the top beautifully aired are spread out your prettier thoughts ready for you to put on so there's a lot of uh, emphasis on um controlling your thoughts uh, the dream world versus the waking world, um, whatever you see in your mind or imagination, you can create kind of a law of attraction, modern concept. And um, Neverland is really symbolic to the imagination. So Neverland, even though it's an alternate world in Peter and Wendy or Peter Pan, it's an alternate world that they escape to, like Allison down the rabbit hole or through the looking glass. It's really symbolic for the imagination. And it's clearly set up that way. You can see metaphorically um, and through the, the descriptive writing that the and the actual text the author uses in the first two chapters. Um, of course, the Neverlands vary a good deal per each child. John's Neverland, for instance, had a lagoon with flamingos. Wendy's Neverland had, you know, so Neverland is really the imagination unique to each child where their thoughts take them. And um, so there's a big thematic focus on the dream world, of course, in this text. Um, I love the child analogy. Doctors sometimes draw maps of other parts of you and your own map can become intensely interesting but catch them trying to draw a map of a child's mind, which is not only confused, but keeps going round and round all the time. There are zigzag lines on it, on the mind, just like your temperature lines on a card. And these are probably roads into the island of your imagination. So the text is really beautifully written, full of symbolism and um there are a lot of things you see you don't see in the movies but it but literature isn't so much about knowing a story um children's literature it's about seeing how they're written so reading the original books of some of the stories you already know is an entirely different experience you get to see the beautiful prose the absolutely stunning description in a lot of these books peter pan for example of imagery setting place wonderful use of words um, hidden symbols and just things you don't see in the movies and just the reading is often just beautiful the writing it's studying the writing that really um, is what's interesting to me about children's literature and if you're an adult reader of children's literature which is what my channel is all about uh, and of course you can read to your middle school child Peter Pan or have them read it um, it you really want to look for the you know, under layer of things symbolically, which is what makes it fascinating. So definitely read Peter Pan and Wendy by Jan Berry. Highly recommended and such a fun, easy three-day read. Thanks.